ATR stands for, in French, Avion de Transport Regional, and in Italian, Aere de Transporto Regionale. And that's exactly what it is. It's a great aircraft for, sh for short distances and short runways, has a substantial cargo capability, is great for island hopping, and you can see from the operators that use it, it's a very robust aircraft. It's uh, built under a joint venture between EADS, which is Airbus, the, the owner of Airbus, uh, of France, and Alenia Aeronautica of Italy, both great names in the aviation industry. It's funny what the French say, all the bad bits are in it are the Italian bits, and uh, whilst the Italians say the same about the French bits. So, depending which side of the coin you are, I, I remember having one instructor from Italy and one from France, and that's all they said. All the good bits are Italian, and the bad bits are French. And the French guy used to say, all the good bits are French, and the bad bits are Italian. Having worked on it myself as a licensed engineer, it is like a baby Airbus with propellers. Some parts are good, and some are not so brilliant. However, I cannot pinpoint French or Italian specific deficiencies. The majority of the parts are built in Europe, with a few parts manufactured in Longue in Canada, as well as Xi'an in China. Merignac, for those who are wondering, is the airport at Bordeaux, which is uh, on the west coast of France. Ijac manufactures parts and Toulouse, as well as Leonardo plant in Naples, put the parts together on dedicated production lines. Here are some dimensions, and each interested party can take their own important notes to each dimension. For example, the refueler needs to know the height of the wing of the, the, the wingtip area, the marshaller needs to know the overall width of the aircraft. Everyone should know the propeller diameter so we can safely walk around it, and so on and so on. Similarly, if the engineers are docking or building docks for this aircraft, then they have to contend with other dimensions as well as the ones on the previous page, each to their own. Every user of these manuals draws the info as they need, as required. Engineers, pilots, dispatchers, refuelers, caterers, loaders, the water and waste service guy, and the list goes on and on. Here we go. For operational purposes, pilots and dispatchers may need to know the weights of the aircraft. If there was a heavy landing and um, we needed uh, to assess it, post the heavy landing, the engineer would also need to be informed of these weights. In the industry, we do not make a habit of learning this data by heart. But having access to it somewhere where it is accurate and current, it makes the operation a lot more efficient. Today, in this modern age of live, shared drives, this is very easy. The ATR-72 airframe comes in several passenger configurations, which can vary from 64 to 74 passengers. Obviously, uh, for each seat, we, for seats, we have to sacrifice galleys but there's purely operational and depends on the operator and the mission of the aircraft, how they use it, what they use it for, etc., etc. The cabin is quite com comfortable in a two-two arrangement. This boasts no middle seats. So you get at least a window um, or aisle seat where, wherever you're sitting. The height is well over six feet, so comfortable to move while in the aisle. And there is substantial overhead storage space as well. I'm six feet tall, and I always found it a bit weird when I was walking through because the overhead bins were like here and here on me. So if, if you're six feet, don't do any abrupt turns because you might hit your head. You'll know about it. The flight crew seats look a bit like this. The captain and the first officer's seats are adjustable on all three axes and bolted to the floor. One observer folding seat is hinged on the avionics rack. This seat is elevated for good visibility of, of the instruments. Again, from experience, it's a very intricate design and takes a bit of trial and error before you can navigate the cockpit door and the observer seat in an efficient way. The 
flight deck layout is pretty modern with the main instruments and panels. For those who have Airbus experience, you will see a lot of similarity. Here we see the pilot's overhead um, circuit breaker panel, or here, sorry, the overhead panel, here, um, the center pedestal, here, and the instrument panels all of, across here. This here. There are several non metallic parts on this aircraft, which as always provide weight reduction and strength. Below are the composite structural components. So we have uh, bits, the pinky bits are carbon nomics sandwich. The orange bits are carbon monolithic structure. So it's all one part. Um, the green bits are Kevlar or not Kevlar stroke nomics sandwich. And the blue bits are Kevlar Nomex sandwich with stiffening carbon plies. So Kevlar is that uh, is a very fine fiber, which you you know bulletproof jackets, for example. That's what Kevlar is made out of. It's a very thin, but it has a lot of uh, impact strength. Kevlar carbon, we know. Um, and lastly, the yellow one is uh, fiberglass Nomex sandwich. So it's fiberglass strength strengthened with a bit of uh, Nomex material or strengthening. You can see there's uh, not very many bits here. This is this bit here. The engine option on this aircraft is a Pratt Whitney 100 series. So Pratt Whitney has the 100, the Pratt Whitney 100 starts. Um, it's a very robust and uh, very frequently used engine with different mod statuses of this engine to be used on different aircraft dash eights atrs all the different variants of the atrs the 72s the 42s the dash eight 100 200 300 the dash uh, q8 400 uh so it's a very um well uh used engine with different stages and different uh Power settings. This one in particular is a Pram Whitney 127M, um, which is fitted for specifically for the 500 and 600 version of the ATR 72. As is a turboprop, the power is measured in shaft horsepower, not in pounds of thrust. The options we see here are so reverse takeoff, uh, takeoff power, the max continuous power. Oh, the max continuous takeoff power, the climb, the cruise, and the fuel flow. Fuel flow is a really important thing, guys, in terms of or when they want to sell this aircraft, because um, they they that number there, two hundred seventy five kilograms per hour, is a very 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 good um, fuel burn. That's why a lot of airlines buy these turboprops, because if you compare it to a similar passenger aircraft, let's say a Fokker 70 that has jet engines uh, or a Embraer 70 or something like that, which has same amount of passengers, but has jet engines that burn round about eight to 900 kilos an hour, as opposed to 275 kilos an hour it's a very very attractive thing to have for these airlines okay some more performance data for this aircraft balance takeoff and field strength field length um at the international uh, standard sea level maximum takeoff weight landing field length Maximum operational cruise altitude, maximum cruise speed, maximum range with maximum payload. All the figures that each specific person, dispatchers, ops, pilots, uh, will need for the next flight, for example. Hotel mode 
is available on the right hand engine it's used only on the ground and is used to provide aircraft electrical supply and air conditioning now i said hotel mode it is like the word hotel um and what it is it provides electrical power um with the engine running as this aircraft does not have an apu it runs the engine um with the brake with the propeller braked to provide some uh power to uh electrical power to, to supply the aircraft systems it's only available on the right hand engine the engine has to be running the propeller brake has to be on so the propeller is not turning the gust lock has to be on and the right condition the right hand condition lever has to be in feather so beware this can be very deceiving and very dangerous on the line because the engine is running it's turning the exhaust gases are hot so although the propeller is not turning you tend to be ah okay this is a safe engine and then you suddenly walk behind it and you get this whiff of boiling hot air 